money, financial journey, the journey to financial freedom, managing your finances is always a work in progress. I do not believe that anybody is perfect. I do not believe that everybody has it, you know, to the T. We Hi guys, my name is Angisoma Mujabelo and welcome to my channel. If it is your first time, I really do hope that you like it here. We chat about all things related to money and adulting in general. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for coming back. I really do appreciate you. Today we are speaking about how I stick to my budget. I'll be telling you guys how I've managed to stick to my budget. So if there's one thing that I've heard a number of times in many conversations, it's I do make a budget. I do it on my app or I do it, um, you know, on a fancy Excel sheet or I do it on my phone, in my journal and all of these things. And it's all good and nice, um, you know, when I do make my budget, which is the plan of how I'm going to spend my money. But I can't seem to stick to it. And that's where the problem comes. So we plan, we prepare, we journal, we note down, we put it on an Excel sheet. But when it comes to actually actioning and, you know, keeping accountable to those decisions, we sometimes flake. Now, I must admit that this is one of the problems that I did find very challenging. So I've been budgeting for the longest of time. I've been budgeting since I was 19 or even a little bit before that. But, you know, it was nice doing the budget. I enjoyed it, especially because I enjoy working with numbers. But when it came to sticking to my budget, I would definitely have a lot of challenges in doing that. Today, I'm not perfect. I'm still a work in progress, guys. Money, financial journey, the journey to financial freedom, managing your finances is always a work in progress. I do not believe that anybody is perfect. I do not believe that everybody has it, you know, to the T. We constantly learn. And, you know, I just share as I learn and on my journey to learning, I do share some of the things that I feel like I've gotten better with. And this is definitely one of them. So there's certain things that I've applied that have really helped me stick to my budget. And I want to share these things with you guys so that if you are doing them, you can do more of them. Or if you haven't incorporated them into your budget, you make sure that you do that. The first thing is the classic one, which is automate, automate, automate as much as possible. I cannot stress this enough. There is a reason why the bank deducts their uh, premium for your car. They deduct their bond. They deduct all of these things. They deduct the minimum repayment on your credit card and all of these things. And they don't leave it to chance. And that is because they understand how money works. And they understand how our minds and our hearts sometimes, because our hearts are also involved in the way that we manage money. They understand how all of these things come together. And we don't end up doing what we have committed to or what we have planned to. And I really believe that we need to adopt this concept in our own finances and run with it. I started incorporating this concept with the smallest of things and I've never looked back. So whether it's sending my mom money every month, I have a standard amount that I send her, it's automated every month, or, you know, like tithes, offering donations, contributions, all of those things are automated. That really helps, guys, because if you religiously do this, it means that two or three days after payday, because some providers, you tell them to deduct on the 25th, but they don't because of the way that their payment system works. So give it two or three days. So if you automate everything for your payday, it means that two or three days after payday, you've taken care of 80% of the things that you need to take care of or 70% of the things that you need to take care of. And then the only thing that you actually have to manage is the money that is left over. So by the Three days after payday, I've already taken care of what I want to invest, what I want to save, my emergency fund, and all of those other things that remain constant throughout the month. And what is left is your groceries, fuel, um, you know, your variable costs, your entertainment, and all of those things, which is not a lot. But I've found that this really, really helps because I've also imagined myself to only have a specific amount of money left after everything has been taken care of. Then I don't need to miss investments or feel like I can't save enough or, you know, it's too late to contribute to something that's important to me because it's already automated. So that's the first thing that I did. The second thing that I incorporated that really helped me stick to my budget is separating my money as far and as efficiently as I could. So what do I mean like by this? So I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with the envelope system, but it's something very similar. So the envelope system is basically withdrawing cash and making sure that you have different envelopes that are dedicated to different expenses. So for petrol, you would have this envelope and it has a thousand rand in it. 
for um, you know entertainment, you would have this um, envelope and it has 1.5 in it and so on and so on. So that is using the cash system, which is I'm not comfortable with that because I like to do something else that I'm going to mention after this. And using cash means I have to keep receipts and all of that stuff. So that doesn't work for me. But I do something very similar. And that is I segregate my expenses into pockets. And then I have money in those different pockets to make sure that I don't use grocery money for going out or, um, you know, use fuel money for groove or use the groove money for something else and give it to someone else or borrow it and all of those other things. So separating it for me has made things so simple and it has made me stay accountable to the different things and also make sure that I am able to physically see when the entertainment budget is running down or when the grocery budget is running down or when the fuel budget is running down. I'm able to catch it quite quickly and then make certain choices in, in, in order to make sure that I fix that. So what do I mean by separating efficiently? So obviously we all know that we pay, we pay banking fees for bank accounts. So if it's expensive to separate in terms of bank accounts, then obviously you're not being efficient in, in doing that. What we've done as a household, and our household is just my husband and I, is that we've got um, time bank accounts, which don't have monthly fees on top of our everyday um, check accounts that we use. And then we use those accounts for things like entertainment, fuel and groceries and stuff like that. And we're able to see that, OK, you know, I have the entertainment budget on my account um, and he would have the grocery and fuel on his account. And then we're able to reconcile quite nicely, which is the next step that helped me stick to my budget because the money is separated. Now, obviously, you need to look at fees. You need to look at what works for you, whether it's different pockets within the same bank account, whether it's the envelope system or whatever it is. It will be dependent on your personality, you know, the dynamics of your household and um, how you budget, etc. But I've found that separating my funds really helps me because then I'm not spending, like I said, fuel on groceries, groceries on groove and all of those other things. And it does help me track quite well as well. The third thing that I did, guys, and which I've mentioned earlier as well, is reconciling often. So what I used to do initially is that I used to budget spend. Then I'm sure this will sound familiar to a lot of us. Then towards the end of the month, I'm like, whoa, okay, I had a budget, but now I've got like 500 rand and you know, I'm supposed to have 2.5, where did the 2,000 go? And now I'm busy trying to like look at my statements, my receipts, my transaction history and all of those things and find the 2,000 rand. And then I realized that maybe I bought a pair of shoes or I went out more than I was supposed to. But the thing is, by then it's too late. You've already spent the money. It's already gone. So if you constantly do that every month, then you're not really helping the situation because you're not improving it in, in any way. So what I started doing is that I started reconciling on a weekly basis. So um, people spend differently i from monday to friday i'm mostly working right i'm mostly working um during the day and then after hours i'm planning or doing other things that i'm interested in so i don't really shop or spend money during the week but on weekends that's where things go out of control sometimes and i find myself going out treating myself to nice things and you know doing grocery shopping or whatever it mostly happens on weekends. So reconciling once a week means I'm basically reconciling what has happened um, from that Friday to Sunday. Obviously, if you're a shopaholic and you like online shopping, you will need to reconcile way more than me. But I've fought that demon and that one has been laid to rest. So I reconcile once a week. And basically what I do when I reconcile is that I say that, okay, cool. In the entertainment budget, I had, for example, 2,000 rand. How much have I spent this weekend on entertainment? Okay, I've spent... 400 or 500 rand. Okay, that means that for the rest of the month, I've got 1.5. How would I like to use this? Do I have plans with my friends? Um, you know, am I going out on a date? Am I treating myself to a massage? Am I doing my nails? What am I doing with whatever is remaining? And then I, I'm able to say, okay, this month, you know, in the middle of the month, I overspent a bit. So let me just pull the brakes and let me make sure that I don't go out next weekend in order to make up for it. So I think you guys get the gist of what I'm trying to get at reconciling not only monthly but weekly or as often as it takes to hold the brakes when you need to release when you need to because sometimes you find that you know i've been busy for three weekends in a row and i haven't really done anything and when i look at my entertainment budget it's looking quite healthy so then i can decide that i'll book myself for a massage because i deserve it because i've been working hard and i haven't been spending on my entertainment budget i can actually do that so reconciling often helps you put the brakes on or realize how much more you still have to spend 
while you can actually still make a change, while you can actually reverse if you need to, or even treat yourself if there's budget to do so. The last thing, guys, which was really the game changer, and that's why I made it a video on its own. It's the art of trading off, the art of saying, you know, this is what I've done um, this month and it's cost me this much. That means that next month I need to trade off for something else. The art of saying, well, this emergency came up. I didn't have enough in my emergency fund. Therefore, this is what I will sacrifice in order to fill that gap. That one is very, very important. And if honestly, if you can apply it in your budget, it will save you a lot of money. It will also save you from a lot of financial strain. And that is understanding that this is how much you have as disposable income. These are the needs that you have prioritizing and trading off to make sure that you are always living within those means. So I won't go into that too much because I have a dedicated video that I will link up here um, speaking about that specifically. So please do catch that because that is actually the fourth thing that I did to make sure that I stick to my budget. I really hope that these tips help you if you find that at the end of the month when you reconcile things are not looking good or you don't seem to be spending on what you had planned to. This is a challenge that everybody has. Nobody is perfect. You will stumble here and there. But perhaps if you use some of the tips that I apply, um, you know, in the way that I budget and in the way that I try and stick to my budget, they might work for you. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give it a huge thumbs up. And also, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, do consider doing so, so I can see you in the next one. Bye.